The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Preparing your way through the wilderness of this life is simply to be the change God needs you to be. Change take time. We expect too much and are, of course, impatient and unforgiving. These were the first few thoughts that the Holy Spirit had flowed up to the top of my mind to where to begin this morning. Probably finishing a 19-page paper reflecting on the body of worship we just finished from All Saints Sunday to Christ is King Sunday was pretty helpful. My use of the word highway in this morning's message is twofold. Yes, I'm alluding to the pathway, but I am also speaking about one's pathos. Truth be told, but John the Baptist is probably one of my favorite characters in the greatest story ever told. He was a rugged individual, a rugged individual in one sense, and on the other, he was committed to being God's messenger. The biblical language speaks of God's messenger as being an angel. He was hardly an angel but lived into being prophetic. A little known and still debated fact about both he and his cousin Jesus is that they may have spent some time in this ancient order known as the Essenes. If anyone ever watches a history channel, they had a wonderful presentation on this a couple years back. Um, they basically found in this special that the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in a hidden area that was determined to be the ancient library of the Essene community. The Essenes were the rebellious opposite of their somewhat snobby counterparts in Jewish society, the Pharisees. The Essenes, just like the early church's beginning monastic movement, dedicated a life to utter simplicity and humility. John the Baptist was a true in-your-face preacher who didn't care about the luxuries of the everyday. In fact, as we have heard, he was known to eat bugs and dressed in perhaps a little underneath Charlie Chaplin's The Tramp attire, ancient attire. That wasn't important to him. He committed to the highway in both senses of what I mentioned, pathway and pathos. Two of my favorite Jesus movies of all time are Godspell, which we, we heard the prelude this morning uh, from 1973, and Franco Zeffirelli's Jesus of Nazareth, a 382 mini TV series that came out in 1977. Both versions, depictions of uh, John the Baptist are wonderful. And Godspell, he almost looks like a cross between a conductor and the Burger King mascot. And Jesus of Nazareth, we would probably think that he looks likes and acts like a crazed homeless man screaming his endless thoughts into the air. Michael York does an excellent job at capturing his passion and energy that John the Baptist was known to have. He had many followers. Let us remember, he had a hard job. He had a hard job basically to, he had to prepare the way for the coming of the king. It is a tragedy, I was telling Don earlier, that the New Century Hymnal doesn't include the hymn, Prepare the Royal Highway, as well as the um, song that we sung earlier as entrance hymn. I was thinking of the Noel Nouvelle uh, lyrics to that, but I, I couldn't find that, actually. Um, 
It's, it's lovely and it says exactly what it is intended to do. His was a voice that lived into Isaiah's echo, basically, a, by crying into the wilderness of our lives to be reined in by the gospel with a hope-filled expectation. Christianity, you could say, is indebted to the voice of Isaiah since his prophecy carried down to us began to reveal the story of the King of Kings, the Messiah, the Christ. The Essene community's Dead Sea Scrolls contained an unknown version of the prophet Isaiah dating some 900 years earlier. That's amazing. Than what was originally handed down thousands of years before. Isaiah, like John the Baptist, was a voice filled with the Holy Spirit, a beautiful passage. Um, both Isaiah and John the Baptist fully incorporated the Spirit of God, calling them to truly be messengers. One of the beginning scenes in God's spell is where the John the Baptist character is blowing his bugle. And this bugle is heard through the hustle and bustle and noise of New York City. I actually use this beginning song as my default ringtone, if you've ever heard my phone ring. I always make sure it's silent in here. Leo, uh, you have heard, play the beautiful prelude this morning. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. I love that scene, especially when the people who would soon become Jesus' disciples begin to drop everything that they're doing. I mean, there was a taxi driver, there was a ballerina, there was, you know, they were coming from all walks of life. And they just basically dropped everything and they started to run towards the center of where the Baptist was bugling and began singing. Of course, by this time, he is at a New York City fountain ready to baptize them all. In the Jesus of Nazareth TV miniseries, he's at top of a hill and he's nearing towards the Jordan River, shouting his hopes to the call to call those to Metanoia. I bet that made you think there. That's good. Metanoia literally means to change the inner person. This changing of the inner person, we could relate to being or having a change of heart. From our days, many days in discipleship school this past several months, having a change of heart or turning the heart to God is reaping, yes, you've guessed it, that new nature. This is our active role in reconciling to God or in heavier language, seeking repentance. Now, if I began with the word repentance, I'm sure it would have unfortunately turned you away from hearing what God's grace hopes for us to hear. The advent of new life in the world isn't just the incarnation of Christ being born into our humanity by the God-bearer, Mary, but the new life he would teach us to bear later on through the voice of his cross. What a powerful image in a short message right there, the voice of his cross. In John, the Baptist case, it would be his head on a platter as ordered through Salome. The voice crying through the wilderness of Judea, however, wasn't silenced by the depravity and great evil of Herod Agrippa and Salome. As soon as he turned the spiritual page of perceptions from the Old Testament to the New by baptizing Christ, which we will hear about more often in the Epiphany season, the new covenant would have, would see its genesis. Speaking of baptisms, the now broken structure of what we have as church, unfortunately has simplified the understanding of baptism down to be merely a, an initiation rite, to simply being a membership in the church. Christianity is truly much more than that, about the church within our very being the heart. The heart is our first church and the place for the Holy Spirit to shape us, direct us to where we need to go. Just this past Tuesday we saw a glimpse of glorious hope for our future as a body to gather before we scatter with the living Word of God. What a wonderful sneak preview of endless hope and expectation to dream into. The only thing for me which became a source of humor 
for a number of us seeing this new potential space was figuring out what on earth or what we would do with this gigantic swimming pool in the backyard. Both you and I uh, don't necessarily subscribe to full immersion baptism, yet alone can imagine potential problems. Yes, I could go into the shallow end with an infant, but if he or she slips out of my hands, or we're in deep doo-doo. <laughs> All humor aside, another way I saw that swimming pool was thinking about how God provides and sends different messages to us about hope. All that water, the well of life an infinite collection of baptismal waters from many new families and children coming to join our humble church family. Yes, that is the great message of hope that I saw from that. Today's scriptures are the spark to the hope that Christ truly provides us with and are preparing our way to serve the Lord God provided. He first had us challenged to take on that gigantic and perhaps nearly terrifying leap of faith. Do it. Create the change. This was lifting our voices, working with others and getting over that hurdle of fear of thinking we're too small to do it. But we did it. And I say thanks be to God. I know we still got to vote on things, dot our I's and cross our T's, but we did it. When I transferred to finish my seminary studies from LSTC to Trinity Evangelical Divinity School, I was at first scared and still lacked the full confidence God is still helping me to grow within myself. But I applied. I got scholarships for church planting and preaching and helped to plant two churches and one church ministry basically from ground zero. That Easter Sunday of 2012 was in some senses an affirmation of my baptism in seeing something wonderfully new on the horizon that I knew would both change my heart and my life forever onward from that point. The blood, sweat, and tears of preparation towards that faithful Easter Sunday of 2012 saw its Genesis in a congregant's dining room several months and process earlier. All things are possible through God who always is trying to get through our thick heads and sometimes closed minds to live into that new life. Hope has truly proven itself to be our cause and effect. These are the fruits of God's efforts to be still speaking. There's that wonderful campaign, God's still speaking in our everyday lives. He and the John the Baptist have one thing in common, they never tire. While well, John's voice was silenced in one sense, but saw its genesis and resurrection through the Messiah, Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus is our giant swimming pool in that backyard at our potential new church home. Look, if the Beverly Hillbillies could turn their swimming pool into Sea Man's Pond, then so can we. <laughs> A lasting word to reflect upon from this morning's message to you, or should I say before you. Preaching is the fruit of God's witness, not just in my life, but never say never on being a bold witness, a voice in the wilderness on the east side of Las Vegas. Being God's messenger is our challenge to tapping into reaping that new life Christ instilled within us. We are once again growing towards the witness of its humble beginning to come in a barn shed in the midst of Bethlehem. John the Baptist turned the world's page towards that royal highway. He transitioned the world to begin to be overflowing with a hopeful expectation for the coming of the King of Kings. We have transitioned as the body to move from the east or eastern avenue down south and perhaps further into the desert, but hardly into a wilderness we can't continue to grow and change from in more ways than one. Let us pray. <clears throat> 
Gracious and loving Lord, we thank you for all your messengers. You have sent humanity over the eons of your timing. We thank you for the voice, prophecy, and boldness of both the prophet Isaiah and John the Baptist. May their witness further enlighten us to change our inner person, seek reconciling ourselves to you and through your grace, with the fruits of our lives lived in hope-filled expectation. Help us to continue to prepare the way for you, gracious Lord. Amen. <laughs>